on top of another. And they will em form an embankment around you and just close you in. Watch this. Here's another image of that sheep. Here's the sheep's eye. There's its other eye. This is coming down the, the face right here to the nostrils right here. There's the lips right there. And here is the tongue sticking out. Okay, and here's the sheep's ear right here. And there's the top of his head. Okay, those who try to hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. Don't forget this is Isaiah. They, they, they carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. Okay, we've seen this, but I'm going to do it again so it sinks in. Who are they? There's something going on here. This is now an image of the virgin. Okay, we're going to go back again now to another image of a sheep. And here's the other image of a sheep. Once again, here is the sheep's eye and the other eye. So here are the two eyes coming down the face to the nostrils and to the lips. This is like the snoot of the sheep. And here are the ears right here going out. And this represents the fur of the sheep right here on the sides. Now, once again, we had an image of the devil. Here's the devil. There's his eye. And there's his eye. And there's his nose. He's got horns. And he has wings. And these wings actually become the ears of the sheep. So we're going to pick the devil up and put him right there on the face of the sheep. I'm going to let Dan get a, just a tight shot of that so you can look at it for a minute. And so Isaiah said, those who try and hide their plans turn everything upside down. Jesus said, they will not leave in you one stone on top of another. Well, who's they? Well, wait a minute. Don't forget, this came off that other pyramid. It's a Mayan king. There's the king's eye, eye, his nose, his mouth. And he's wearing, once again, a ridiculous headdress. I mean, I, I'm not buying the headdress because it's just too outlandish, but it sure makes a good sheep with a devil superimposed on the face. Okay, we're getting really close to uh, cracking up, cracking open the abomination of desolation. Here we go one more time. I'm going to show you this image. It's an image of a sheep. There's the sheep's eye. Here's the teardrop coming out of the eye. This is the top of the sheep's head coming down to its nose. Its, its tongue sticking out of its mouth. Here's the sheep's ear and then going down his chin to his neck. And once again, I'm going to rotate it. Now, I'm going to cover up this half. Let me see if I can do it with a piece of paper. Make it easy. There we go. So I'm going to cover up this half like this and show you the image of like the devil smiling at you. There's his eye. I mean his eye, his horn. And then this is coming down his face to it. His nose would be about right here. And there's his mouth. So you got an image of the devil smiling at you. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to show you half the face of like a human like sheep. There's his eye. He's got an ear like a sheep. He's got a smiley mouth like a human. Now they will not leave in you one stone on top of another. Well, it's obvious from this image and the previous image that they is the devil. This has the devil right on top of a sheep. This is destroying the temple. Don't forget we're bearing witness to the destruction of the temple. So the devil is right on top of the sheep. So this is destroying this temple. And in the following page, the exact same thing is going on. And I'm going to turn this page so you can see that when I put this right side up, all I've done is just color in the queen's face and um, turn it up. Well, turn it right side up. Now I'm going to turn it upside down. And you can see that there is that same sheep. There's a sheep's eye, tongue, nose, and mouth. So you're looking at a sheep that's dying to produce, excuse me, to produce a hybrid species. Now, I'm going to show you who's behind it. It's time. The groundwork's been laid. You've seen several different sources of sheep with their tongues sticking out. And 
we've been to Isaiah, but I'm going to put Isaiah up here one time and we're going to record it so your eyes actually see it in the Bible. We're going to look at the King James version of it. I think it's really, really good and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so hang on one sec. Take this. Here we go. All right. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Isaiah 29, 15. Okay, you ready? We're on? Okay. This is, Isaiah was a prophet 500 years before Jesus Christ. And he, he had a lot of incredible prophecies about the coming of Jesus. Um, probably the most famous one is in Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion of Christ. It starts off uh, with a prophecy about, uh, from Isaiah about the coming of Christ and what was going to happen to him. Um, here we go. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. He says, For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not, or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? And God is making a reference here to what I'm showing you. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep turning things upside down and I'm going to get to who they are. Because that's who we're trying to get to the bottom of, who is they and they is the abomination of desolation. So we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to get the next stuff set up. Now, okay, here we go. This is this is where we crack it open. And uh, first, I'd like to take a, just a moment to say, God, thank you for this awesome, awesome revelation of what you're about to see. It's really the mystery solved, and um, it's freedom. Um, Jesus said, "You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free." I've heard a lot of people use that. But when God revealed this to me, there's no greater freedom than knowing the truth. And so I hope it'll find a place in your heart and I hope you'll be able to understand it. We're gonna zero in on the abomination of desolation. Okay, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, the time will come when you will see what Daniel the prophet spoke about, the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. He even said, reader, pay attention. And this is in the chapter that we're dealing with the end of the world. And the disciples saying, what will be the sign of your coming? And so he says, there will be wars, rumors of wars. But when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken about Daniel, man, that's when things are going to kick off. I'm going to show you the abomination. You're looking at right here, the image of an alien. Here's his eye and here's his eye. Here's his nose. And here's his frowny mouth right here. This is the bottom of his chin. And this is the top of his head right here. This line right here is a line in his neck because apparently he's turned and he's looking upward this way. This is his neck going down here. And he is holding a child in his hands. The reason this child is colored different colors is going to be explained to you in a minute because this is the functioning of the gift of wisdom and the gift of knowledge. Um, the Lord lets me see things that are normally hidden. Um, one really cool thing that Jesus said, he told the Pharisees, he said, I've come to judge the world and to give sight to the blind and to show those who think they see that they are blind. And the Pharisees said, are you saying that we're blind? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty, but your guilt remains.